Nick Lessigore here, main brew guy. Exit 12. Say brewery. <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Tap out brewery in the house. I had to think I changed my brewery name. It used to be Ledge Brewing. I'm like, oh, which one do I say? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Um, and today, he is visiting me mm -hmm. here in good old Hanson, Massachusetts. Welcome. Thank you. And from Naples, Florida. But I used to live in this area, so I, knew, I know well. Yeah. Very true. And we're excited to have him in the kitchen of Exit 12 Brewery. We're going to be reviewing another beer. We did one earlier. I'm sure you guys have seen that video. If you haven't, stop this one and go check that one out. Yeah, right now. This instant. Yeah. Immediately, if not sooner. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from the guys at Plato's Gravity, Aaron and Jason. Uh, they brewed a molasses beer for us. And I don't 100% know the beer style, but that means that it's now a game, and we get to figure out what style of beer it is. And I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's gonna be Stump the Chump here, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice little pop from that. We do know that it has molasses in it. Okay, that's what we do know. Yes, they brewed a cider that they put cranberry in that Brandon and I reviewed, excuse me, that thought, we thought was amazing. It was very clear. So you boys are on Indiana here. They're in Indiana, Plato's Gravity. Check them out on your, whatever you listen your, to your podcasts on. Uh, Stitcher, iTunes, Android, whatever the case may be. We'll put the link in the shows. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, so this could be a brown ale. Mm -hmm. um, nice carbonation, I'll say that. Not really a head, but it's got some minor legs. Um, it looks very hazy. Yeah. You know, like if you hold up to the light, there's definitely like very minor, maybe orangey, reddish hues to it. Yeah. Uh, Gary just getting all sorts of nose up in that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to drag my nose in there. He's nosing was in the hell out of this. You know why? Because I told you already, right? This is my first molasses beer. And his very first molasses beer that he's had. Is it homebrew or in general? In, ever. Like when you mentioned molasses in the beer, I was like, huh? Like yeah. Scooby Doo, you know. Well, <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know what? We're gonna have to, Aaron and Jason. We're gonna ask you how you put the molasses in. I'm very interested. You rustle up some bubbles, mm. and actually, uh, kind of sticks around. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad. I don't mind that. So yeah, it's like a hazy brown. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's a brown just by looking at it. By smelling it, I would say it's a brown. It's got a really um, alcohol kind of beginning on it but I, I if I if you fight through it I feel like you get some like roasty kind of um, brown sugary brown sugar you know what I get um, what are those sugar babies sugar babies do you know like the sugar candies? no you're outdating me right now the, the little brown candies of the sugar daddies sugar oh babies. see I was thinking root beer gummies no no sugar babies I think that's what they're, they're called. called sugar babies I think so all right fair enough I'll Google search after that could be way off. <laughs> you but know. that's what I think I'm smelling. And that yeah, it could be Katie, because that's quite right. <laughs> so what I think of when I smell it is those <clears throat> graham cracker bears that used to get in this in this plastic with the frosting. You mean with your sippy cup? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit later than that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but it was like very uh, like graham cracker, little graham cracker bears, you dip it in the ice. Yes, and yes. It. Now I know which one you're talking about. Yes. I can't remember what they're called. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, you're right. But I right. like, I get that kind of smell from that. Yeah. But, um, and I think what you're, that smell you're getting is the same kind of um, flavor and aroma. You know what? I'm going to look it up on my phone. Right now. Fair enough. Sugar babies. I had it right. Right there. <laughs> That's what I'm getting on the nose. It's like those candies you get at, the, like he said, the movie theater. It, I feel like that could be the brown sugar concept. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're definitely, because it's molasses and brown sugar. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah pretty much. I think that's pretty much the ingredients here. Mm. I'm really jazzed to try this. Yeah, let's let's not delay that. No, Aaron and Jason, cheers, thank you. Cheers. Gary, salute. Salute. Mastrovia. Mm. Big time. Oh wow. 
Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Holy sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this almost, if this was a little bit thicker on the mouthfeel. Black licorice, too. Right I, can see it, I can see a hint of black licorice. Mm -hmm. I definitely get the sugar baby concept. Yeah. But if this was a little bit thicker on the mouthfeel, it would make a phenomenal molasses stout. Like if the mouthfeel was a little bit thicker, yeah. it washes off the palate fairly quickly. Yeah, it does. It's not drying, but it's it's gone pretty quickly. I mean, I, the only thing that lingers on the palate is that black licorice kind of flavor. Like almost that anise kind of thing. Anise. Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. Maybe they put anise in it. Because that is, we, I, so we brewed with anise once for uh, Primo Snid, which is our Belgian... <laughs> Our Anisek Cookie Belgian Dark Strong. Which was good, by the way. Oh, yeah, you had it. Yeah, yeah that's right. I reviewed that in Puerto Rico. Yes. Video forthcoming. Video <laughs> forthcoming. Appreciate that. <laughs> so we've used anise, star anise for that in the boil in the last 10 or 15 minutes. So I could completely get that black licorice anise, star anise concept. Sure. Um, but like I said, very quick, like, rush, like, cleans off the palate yep. fairly quickly. Yeah. It, it does, I mean, when you first take that sip, you think... Ooh, this is gonna be this is thick and syrupy, but then nope, it just kind of washes away with I don't know, washes off the palate fairly quickly with just a lingering like black licorice residue. Yeah, and I think to your point on that, there's something refreshing about that yeah. concept. Yeah, when you think molasses, you think something dark and heavy and mouth coating, but the fact that this has that molasses sweetness, but it's very thin. I think is, is very uh, very very good, <clears throat> right? And I think if you had if you had thickened this up at all, it would just be like cloy sweet and just undrinkable. And maybe it would drown out some of that black licorice. Yeah, that too was thicker. Yeah, so I think that uh, it's well balanced there. I don't get any hot presence at all. It's uh, it's the, the, next to none. Yeah, yeah. But so, I think with the molasses, you probably don't want that hot presence. No, it's, maybe some spice, maybe some uh, willamette, or uh, maybe like. Maybe a, a hop that you'd use for like a saison or something, you know, something less sweet. Stritzel splats or whatever, you know, whatever they call that hop, stritzel splats. Yeah, yeah, Some, something that, that is going to probably give it a, a little bit of a spicy note. But I mean, that, the fact that there's no hop presence doesn't necessarily take away from the beer. It's no, no, it's a good beer. Yeah, I was just thinking if you wanted to yeah. knock down some of, you know, some of the perceived sweetness, you should sure. with some hops. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think... When I went on the show with the guys, this is one of the beers they sent me, obviously, and they mentioned how they, they called this like a, one of their beers that, that wasn't that good. I find this to be very, very Yeah, I, I totally disagree with you guys' assessment on that. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass, but uh, this is a really good beer. I, I like the concept. I, I actually was a little skeptical, but curious. Uh, I wanted to try this when he said molasses. I'm yeah. like, ooh, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's really good, to be honest with you. I I'm, I'm a little shocked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I <laughs> think, you uh, were, yeah, you were building me up for, you know, the boys were just uh, disappointed in this. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I, and I know it's a little bit on the older end. I know in terms of age, it, it, it's probably a little older, but I think that may have actually helped it. Yeah. Because if it's sweet now, I can't, I can't imagine how sweet it was when it was fresh. And honestly, this, this is going to age well. Um, I agree. And it, one of the things that's nice about this beer is even if you've got um, a little bit of uh, oxidation in there, it will actually improve the beer in this case. Because Maybe offset some of the sweetness. Yeah. 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 So a little bit of oxidation in a beer like this is actually probably going to be beneficial. So if you boys have more of these, I'd hang on to these for three or four years. And then every year break a bottle open and, and see how it's doing. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Overall, I think it's a good beer. So. Uh, Aaron and Jason. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for, for sending the beers. I really appreciate it. Cheers. Gary appreciates it. I do appreciate it. And thank you for my very first molasses beer. <laughs> I can't believe I've never had one. <laughs> Homebrew vet. Guy's got his number in the rafters. He's He's got the ceremony. They've given him his jersey on a plaque, and he hasn't had a molasses beer, the first one. First and he one. loves it. I love it. Hey, can't have a better compliment than that. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you.